Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together for worship today. We set our clocks ahead appropriately, and here we are on time, in, even on a cold and rainy morning. It is good to see everyone, and we are grateful for the opportunity to worship together today. I hope that you will find the friendship pads that are found in your, in your pews. They're either on one side of the pew or the other. As you fill those out and pass them down, this is not only an opportunity for us to have a record of those who've come to worship with us this morning, but it's also a chance for you perhaps to get to know someone new as those pads are passed down and then passed back. Please do glance at the names and hopefully you'll be able to greet one another by name following the service today. I want to say a special word of welcome to guests and visitors. It is always a great joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. If you are a visitor with us, I hope that you will indeed sign that friendship pad and also include, in addition to your name, your email or phone number or address some other way that we might be in touch with you just to say thanks for worshiping with us this morning. And if you are looking for a church home, I hope that you will find Unity to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you could speak with me, speak with someone seated near you that we might answer any questions that you might have. And also want to invite you next Sunday to come just a little early, 10 o'clock. We're having a Welcome to Unity coffee during, uh, the, during the Sunday school hour in the Fellowship Hall. So come and join us for that time as well. As you're filling out those friendship pads, just a few brief announcements to uh, share with you about opportunities for worship and service here at Unity in the weeks to come. First, thanks to all who participated yesterday in our Go Mad, Go Make a Difference Day of Service. A wonderful chance for us to serve not only here in our own congregation, but truly across our community as well. If you took any pictures yesterday, please pass those on to me so that we can be sure to share them in the newsletter or via social media. If you signed up for a t-shirt, Unity t-shirt, and you've not yet picked it up, they'll be available in the narthex following the service today. And if you didn't sign up for a shirt, we have some extras. And if you would like one, they are available as well. So check in the narthex following the service today. Vacation Bible School registration is underway. And if you, uh, we've got more than 50 children already signed up for Vacation Bible School. So be sure to sign your children up uh, over the next week in particular. And it goes uh, even more broadly open after that. So be sure to find the links in the bulletin for that. Also, even more importantly, perhaps, is the opportunity for all of us to be a part of Vacation Bible School as, um, as elders and as leaders and as members of our congregation. We each have a part to play in making that such an important week for our children as well. So there are things to do ahead of time. There are certainly things to do during that week itself. So sign up to be a part of Vacation Bible School as adults as well. The men's ministry will have their next breakfast on Tuesday. So men, draw your attention there. Easter honorariums and memorials are due next Sunday, which is March the 19th. And we just got word that our caterpillars for Easter will be delivered tomorrow. So if you have signed up for caterpillars, you can pick them up on Tuesday between 10.30 and 4 or on Wednesday between 8.30 and 5. We do have a few extra caterpillars as well. So if you didn't sign up for caterpillars and you would like to grow them into butterflies, this is your chance. Uh, so speak to Catherine McGregor about that. Looking ahead just a little farther, I hope that uh, children and families, you're signed up for our um, children's ministry Easter egg hunts. Those will be on March the 24th and 25th, same days as our high school youth are doing their lock-in. So sign up for that. We'll be hosting Family Promise uh, the week of April the 2nd to the 9th. And we are in the midst of our stewardship efforts for this year. And if you've not yet picked up your stewardship packet, you can grab those in the hallway outside the narthex so that we don't have to mail them to you uh, this week. So be sure to pick up your packet if you've not yet done so. God is doing such amazing, wonderful things here at Unity Presbyterian Church. So let us continue our time together with worship this morning.
Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us sing to the rock of our salvation. Even in the deserts of our lives, God is among us. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Please be seated. The God whom we worship is also the God who graciously forgives our sins through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In that knowledge, let us now join in a time of confession, first together through the prayer found in the bulletin and then through our individual silent prayers of confession. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we confess that we are not ready for your holy realm. You make a way for us, but we are afraid to step up and step out in faith. We lay heavy burdens on others and are unwilling to share the load. We want to be lifted up as leaders, but you call us to humble service. 
Forgive us, merciful God, so that we may follow you with boldness and courage. Empower us to tell the story of our redemption and your great love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we know that God is with us even in our suffering, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces a hope that does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through Jesus Christ. Hear, sing, and believe the good news. Please stand now as we sing our response. Our first scripture reading for today is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 4, verses 27 through 42. Jesus has just finished speaking with the girl at the well and how has engaged in a conversation with the disciples. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her jar and went to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I, so the disciples said to another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him. And he stayed there for two days and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. At this time, let me invite our young friends, the children, to come and uh, spend a few moments together with me here on the steps. If you are watching from home, I hope that you'll draw near to the screen so that you might be a part of this special time as well.
good morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. It is good to see you. Thank you so much for coming up and being a part of worship. It's kind of a cold and dreary day, but just seeing you makes it better. So I'm glad that you're here. Always makes worship better when you are here together on Sunday mornings. So let me ask you a question. Um, have you ever forgotten something? You said you're supposed to remember something and then you ended up forgetting it. Has that ever happened? I'm surprised you're young. I know that happens to me all the time because I'm getting old, right? So, but I was thinking that maybe that might be something that you would have to remember as well. So, yeah. So, you know, sometimes I'm thinking when what helps me remember if I'm supposed to go somewhere or be somewhere at a particular time, I know I can maybe do a couple things. I can maybe put it on my calendar, right? That often helps me as a, as a way to remember. Um, I even maybe sometimes can set an alarm on my cell phone and when the alarm goes off I'll remember oh I need to go and do this thing that I promised that I would do right yeah so um, so before people had like calendars and cell phones sometimes they would take a piece of string right and they would tie it onto their finger like this right and every time they looked at the string on their finger what do you think they would do They'd remember, that's right, they would remember, oh, I see this string on my finger, I'll remember this thing that I'm supposed to do, right? Well, let's see, uh, maybe there's some other ways too, right? Um, some of you maybe have gotten, did you get stars back in January, star words for this year? Well, this was a, my word for this year, is illumination, and this is a big star, and so to make sure I didn't forget it, I put it next to the monitor for my computer at the church office. So every day when I look at my computer screen, I see my star and my word, and I remember that. So that's another thing, right? We might make ourselves a note or put it someplace where we might, we might be able to see it. You know, I, went, I was a part of a group one time, and we wanted to remember something. And so we went and we wrote words on a rock. Can anybody read what that word is? forgiveness that's right so my word from that particular weekend was forgiveness and we took these rocks with us to help us remember remember the weekend and the thing that we were supposed to we were supposed to know and then one more thing that i thought we might all be able to remember is that anytime we see one of these right what is this it's a cross that's right that's right so anytime we see a cross we can remember right god's great love for us that god showed us in jesus what do you think? Um, Jesus died on the cross. He did die on the cross. That's right. Yeah, we're getting ready to celebrate that and then the way that he rose again to new life, right, on Easter. Are there crosses? Are there other crosses y'all can find here at the, at the, in the church? Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's one right there. Yeah, so. Yeah, there's one up in the window. That's right. Yep. Yeah. One on my, star, on my stole. That's right. Yeah, my scarf. That's right. Yep, yeah. so. On my necklace, I've got one too. Yeah, that's right. One on the table here, and, and there's one over here even. And right behind me, that's right. Yeah, there are all kinds of crosses here at church, aren't they? So one of the reasons. Yeah, up there too. It does kind of look like Legos, doesn't it? Yeah, no, those are just stained glass windows, and it kind of looks like they got the same colors. It helps us, right? And you can make a cross with your fingers. That's exactly right. So... A little bit, that's right. Yep, it's kind of called a holding cross, right? Because you can kind of put it in your hand. So. so anytime we see a cross, we can remember God's great love for us, right? And what God has done for us in Jesus. It helps us to remember to tell others about how much God loves us too. So can you all remember that for me this week? Lots of different ways in which we remember, right? And helps us to tell the story. So let's pray together. I'll pray a little bit and you can repeat after me. All right, let us pray. Dear God, Dear God. we thank you. For Jesus, for Jesus and, your great love for us. and your great love for us, help us to remember, us to remember. and to tell others. To tell others. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for coming up and being a part of this special time together today. If you are headed to children and worship or nursery, you can head out the door with your friends or back to your seats. We're going to surround you with our song of blessing.
This morning is the second morning of our stewardship campaign and emphasis for this year, which grows out of the theme, Step Up and Step Out. As people of faith, we live with gratitude for the many gifts that God has given to us. And with faith, we continue to walk with Christ each and every step along the way. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can step up in faith to both step up and step out with our financial gifts as well as our engagement in ministry in this new year as we prepare for Commitment Sunday, which is March the 26th. Last Sunday, we began this series with Noah and his family as they stepped out of the ark after the flood. And they took that step, not because they were confident in their own abilities, but because they trusted that the God who had carried them through the flood would also be with them each and every step that was ahead. They were able to let go of their fear and step out in faith. That same trust, that same faith is the foundation for us as we seek to step up and step out with our pledges of time and talents and financial resources this year. This morning, we turn to another text from the Old Testament, this time as the people of Israel take new steps of faith, crossing the Jordan River into the land that God has promised them, much like the crossing of the Red Sea at the beginning of their Exodus journey, Now, as a symbolic end of their journey, the priests with the ark step into the Jordan River and the waters roll back so that the people can cross on dry land. God does not want the people to forget this particular moment. So we join the story here as we hear God's word to us today from the book of Joshua, the fourth chapter, verses 1 to 7. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Select twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them, Take twelve stones from here out to the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priests' feet stood. Carry them over with you and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the twelve men from the Israelites, whom he had appointed, one from each tribe, And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In his work describing the history of our nation in honor of its centennial in 1976, author James Mishner writes of a Native American who remembers the words of an ancient song as he's about to be killed in battle. And with his dying breath, he sings, Only the rocks endure forever. The bison thunders, but I do not see the dust. The beaver slaps his tail, I do not hear. Man above still sends the river flowing past, still helps the beaver climb the mountain peak, still turns the aspen golden in the fall. The chiefs assemble, but they speak no words. The enemy begins its charge, and spears are glistening. Only the rocks endure forever. Yes, only the rocks endure forever. 
That's why Joshua instructs those 12 men from Israel, one from each tribe, to go into the riverbed of the Jordan before the place where the priests stood with the Ark of the Lord. Each of them is to pick up a large stone, not a pebble, not a rock the size of your fist, but a stone so large you had to carry it on your shoulder. This was a significant moment for God's people. They were entering into the promised land after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. This is a moment they needed to remember. And so the 12 men pick up these large stones from the riverbed of the Jordan. They carry them to the place where the people camped that night. And the stones are placed together as a monument, a memorial, forever. Only the rocks endure forever. We too have some stones, some rocks here at Unity Presbyterian Church. They've not yet endured forever, but they have been around for a long time. On March the 18th of 1788, the first Unity Presbyterian Church worship service was held. That means this coming Saturday, our congregation will be officially 235 years old. We will celebrate that anniversary later this year, and there is already a lot of exciting planning and preparation underway. Now, our, first, our congregation's first sanctuary was constructed a couple miles from here. It was on a hill overlooking Still Creek and close to the old grist mill that gave our town its name. Many of you may know that today we are worshiping in this congregation's fifth sanctuary. But some of you might not remember that some of the stones from the foundation of that first church were moved and are now in the columbarium here on this side. The original log structure was destroyed by fire, but the stones, the rocks, endure. But here's the thing about stones. The ones from the Jordan River bed carried and set up by those 12 men from Israel. Or the rocks the Native American warrior celebrated with his dying breath or the ones which made up the foundation of our first sanctuary, or even the bricks of this sanctuary today. The thing about stones is that they just sit there. They do not produce or accomplish anything of meaning or value unless, unless those stones spur us to remember and to tell a story. The nondescript monument of large stones assembled in the camp of the Israelites was designed to cause all inquisitive children to ask, what do these stones mean to you? It would provide opportunities again and again to tell the story of how God delivered the people from slavery in Egypt, how God sustained them through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and now had finally rolled back the waters of the Jordan so that the people could take steps of faith to cross into the land of promise. Yes, the stones endured, but only so that the people could remember and tell the story. And so that's the question that I want to ask you this morning. What do these stones mean to you? The stones of Unity Presbyterian Church, the ones that have endured throughout our history, the ones in which we worship God together this morning. Yes, what does this church mean to you? Whether it's your first time here or you have attended all of your life, what story can you tell? What meaning and purpose is there for you as a part of this congregation today?
In preparation for this year's stewardship campaign, the committee asked you to respond to a very similar question. And guess what? We read all of the answers that you shared. So what do these stones mean to you? Some of the things that you told us are things like unity is so special. Worship and the word of God is wonderful. Everyone always feels at home. It's where we are anchored in the midst of this crazy world. We get encouragement, fellowship, and the ability to serve all at unity. Unity is a place to be challenged, loved, accepted, and to grow in faith and to share God's love with others. I continue to be impressed, someone said, by how unity and the Presbytery and the Presbyterian Church seek to help those outside of unity. Unity is where our children are encouraged and apply the lessons of loving their neighbor and God each Sunday and through various events during the year. As parents, we've made lasting friendships and grow in our faith each week through a beautiful and thoughtful service through Sunday school and also by being involved in various activities. Unity spreads its love well beyond Fort Mill and York County, another person said. Please share with the congregation all of the congregation's involvement with local and worldwide outreach. I think we are the beacon on the hill, someone said. Unity demonstrates the importance of having a servant's heart. And finally, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's proclaimed every Sunday through the scriptures, the sermon, the music, the affirmation of faith, and the invitation to support our church with our time, talents, and resources. Now, those are just a few of what you had shared with us in response to that question. My beloved friends, what do these stones mean to you? Would you echo anything that you just heard? What would you add to those voices from our congregation? Yes, what do these stones mean to you? If you turn the question around and ask me as your pastor, I think I would say something like, what these stones mean to me is that it is such a gift to serve here with you at Unity Presbyterian Church because I literally see God transforming and changing lives. Each week I write to visitors and I say, I hope that you can begin to glimpse some of the ways that Christ is alive and at work in this congregation. The Holy Spirit is filling us with hope and joy and laughter our children and youth have so much fun as they are introduced to the good news of the gospel. We care for each other so well in times of sorrow. We share God's love with our community and friends around the world. We're good stewards of the space and the resources that we have. We lift our voices together in praise. We are not perfect by any means. And God calls us to grow and repent and to be transformed. But thanks be to God that surely the transforming, life-giving presence of the Lord is in this place. Yes, the stones remain because they help us remember they inspire us to tell the story. What do the stones mean to you? What do you give thanks to God for as you consider your step up and step out pledge of time, talents, and financial resources? What do you want to see continue? What would you like to see grow in this church and in our life together? I'm convinced that as we step up and step out into a land of promise that God is with us. 
So how will you help to tell that story? Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, you speak to us. You help us to remember, to know and experience your transforming love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Inspire us again. Help us not forget. Help us to commit, to share the story of what you do for us and for this church with all we need. For we do pray these things in the name of our crucified and yet risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, in response to hearing Scripture read and proclaimed, I do invite you as you are able to stand that together we might declare what it is that we believe. Today we'll use words adapted from the Confession of 1967. You find them printed in your bulletin. The church responds to the message of reconciliation in praise and prayer. In that response, it commits itself afresh to its mission, experiences a deepening of faith and obedience, and bears open testimony to the gospel. Adoration of God is acknowledgement of the creator by the creation. Confession of sin is admission of every person's guilt before God and of their need for God's forgiveness. Thanksgiving is rejoicing in God's goodness to all people and in giving for the needs of others. Petitions and intercessions are addressed to God for the continuation of divine goodness, the healing of human ills, and deliverance from every form of oppression. The arts, especially music and architecture, contribute to the praise and prayer of a Christian congregation when they help people to look beyond themselves to God and to the world, which is the object of God's love. You may be seated. Please join with me now as we enter into a time of prayer together. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all we are and all that we have is truly a gift from you. In faith and in love, help us to do your will. We are listening, O oh God. Speak now your words into the depths of our souls that we may hear you clearly. We offer to you this day all the facets of our lives, whether it be at home, at work, or at school, to be patient, to be merciful to be generous. Give us the wisdom and insight to understand your will for us and the fervor to fulfill our good intentions. We offer our gifts of time, talent, and possessions to you as a true act of faith to reflect our love for you and for our neighbor. Help us to reach out to others as you, O oh God, have reached out to us. We come to you this day praying for peace in our world and for an end to violence, especially in Ukraine, in Iraq, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Sudan. We also come with our prayers for all those who suffer from any form of illness. We pray for those who are anxious, who are sorrowful, 
or in any kind of need or distress. Especially pray for loved ones and for friends who are ill or injured. Or those anticipating or recovering from surgery. Or who are in any kind of need. O oh Lord, giver of life and the source of all freedom, we know that all we have we received from your hand. Gracious God, you call us to be stewards of your abundance, to be the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us to always use your gifts wisely and teach us to share those gifts generously. Send the Holy Spirit to work through us, bringing your good news to those we have been called to serve. May our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. We pray with grateful hearts now the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout this month, as a part of our stewardship efforts, we are blessed to hear from various members of our congregation as they share with us a bit of their faith and a bit of their journey in, with Christ together. And this morning, we are blessed to hear from Bethany and Andrew Thomas. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bethany Thomas, and this is my lovely assistant, Andrew Thomas, my husband, who's here for support. You might not hear from him. I'm the talker of this crew. Um, but whenever Dr. Matt reached out and asked for us to share a story about stewardship and stepping up and stepping out, the first thing that came to my mind was our journey that spanned years of our life together through infertility and adoption loss. Um, whenever we began the journey to start our family years ago, we had no idea that we were standing at the foot of a mountain that we had to climb with no tools to help us climb it and no knowledge about what was on the other side. <clears throat> Our family building story is a good one because it's evidently clear that the Lord handpicked our children to be ours. From hearing countless times that pregnancy was not in the cards for us to living through an adoption loss, we are here to tell you that our God has the final word, and i got to stay true to my South Georgia Southern Baptist roots, and I have to say amen to that. <laughs> there are countless details that I could share about our journey, but I'll share a few pieces that are still etched in my mind after all of these years. I can remember that when we decided to pursue adoption, we were thinking, can we do this? We have no idea how to even go about this. Can we even afford adoption? And during that time, we were blessed to work with an adoption consultant who told me, Bethany, all you have to do is put your yes on the table. God will find what he favors. And so we did. We said yes, and we took a huge step of faith. We stepped up and stepped out. And God showed up in a way that only he can. We are now blessed with two children, ages nine and eight, through adoption and pregnancy. And these two miracles are in the room. Through this, we have learned that our battle was only the beginning of our purpose. 
it has taken me a decade to be able to talk about this <clears throat> because as you can see, the emotions and memories are still very raw for me. However, I know that the Lord chose us because he wanted to give us the opportunity to step up and step out and use our story to positively impact others who may be walking the same road. So today, I'm very grateful to volunteer with Defend the Fatherless that serves York County foster families and adoptive families, and I also lead an infertility and adoption loss and pregnancy loss support group through Resolve.org. Through these two things, I hope to encourage other families who are going through what we went through in a time where they definitely need support from people who have walked the same path. If you are unsure about how to give your time, talents, or finances, my suggestion is to pray and listen for God's voice. If you feel that you haven't heard his voice, or maybe it's not clear, then you should spend more time with him. For example, I can pick out Andrew's voice in a room full of people. Y'all probably can't because he's not saying anything. <laughs> but the same goes for our relationship with the Lord. The more time that you spend with him, the easier it is to hear his voice above all the noise that we hear day to day. And I'll finish out with a memory that I have. Um, we're from Georgia, <clears throat> and our, at our church there, I clearly remember one Sunday sermon had a scripture that just resonated with us as we were trying to make a decision on what was next for our family. And it was James 127, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of the Lord is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. That was kind of our aha moment when we knew that adoption was the next step for us. Um, if you or somebody you know is going through infertility or loss or is interested in learning more about adoption, I would love to talk to you or to them. And thank you all so much for listening to our story. Bethany and Andrew, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, sharing your faith and the ways in which this church and other churches have been in such an important piece of your story. Each and every week we have opportunity to join our stories with God's story. We do that as we worship God together. We certainly do it as we dedicate our time and our talents and our financial resources to the ministry of this church and through this church throughout the entire world. As we come, we give sometimes as the plates are passed by us in the pews, sometimes we give online, perhaps in the mail. But all of these are ways in which we say yes to the call God places upon our life to be engaged in ministry together. Let us receive this morning our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we do give you thanks for all the many gifts that you provide for us, including the gift of this opportunity to worship you today. We ask that you would receive these, our tithes, our offerings, that they might be symbols of the dedication of our very selves to you. Bless these gifts. Bless us, O Lord, that we might serve you faithfully this day and each day that is to come. We do pray these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. My friends, we go forth from this place as our service of worship concludes. May our lives of worship and service begin anew. May we recognize the gifts that God has given to us, the ways in which we build upon them and continue to tell that story in a world that is in desperate need of hope and love and good news. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.